Today we're going to be talking about section 2.5, which is on scatter plot and lines of regression. So, anytime we have data that has two variables, it's called bivariate data. Okay? And so we like to graph bivariate data by using what are called scatter plots, or sometimes we call them dot plots. Now you've probably seen these before in pre-algebra, algebra, maybe you've seen them in science plots. So scatter plots look, there's three different ways they look. Okay? There's either one where they have a positive correlation, where in general the dots are going up as you look at them from left to right, like you read a book. There's negative correlation where they go down as you look at them like a book. Or there's no correlation where there's just dots all over the place. Okay? Now those lines, those red lines you see in the first two, are called a line of fit. Or in our case, line of best fit. Okay? And those actually represent what are called some sort of prediction equation that you can use to predict data that's not graphed. So if we look at this one right here, it says use a scatter plot and prediction equation. Okay, so the first part we have is to look at our data, which is comparing the percent of U.S. households with internet access. Okay, now on the graph it talks about years since 1995. Okay, so you'll see the first one, the first data is 1997 and 18. So how many years after 95 is that? Well, that's two. So this is the point two. And then 18%, And then we graph the rest of them. Okay, so the next one, 2000, well, that's five years. After 95, 41.5. So we got six years after, and 50.4. Eight years, 54.7. And then 12 years, 61.7. Okay, so we've graphed that. Yours is already graphed in your notes, so you don't have to worry about that. The next part. Use two ordered pairs to write a prediction equation. Now you'll see our line of fit that we drew actually is through two of the points. So you want to try and get it through two points at least. And then have the rest of the points, either most of them about half be above the line and half below. So in this case, we had three points that were not on the line. So two of them are above, one is below. I say that's a pretty good line of best fit. So we use the two points that are on the line of best fit to make our prediction equation. So those are the points by 41.5 and 12, 61.7. Okay, those are the two points that I graph my line of fit right through. So if I'm going to make my prediction equation, first thing I have to find is my slope. So I'm going to do y2 minus y1. All over x2 minus x1. I go to my calculator, put that in, and I get about 2.89 is my slope. So now I'm in my slope, and if I want to write my equation for my line, okay, I'm going to first use the point slope point. So I'll use the first point, x1, y1. And I'll say y minus 41.5 is equal to 2.89 times x minus 5. I'll solve this out by distributing the 2.89. y minus 41.5 is equal to 2.89x minus, and 2.89 times 5 is going to be 14. Now I'm pretty close. The last thing I have to do is get y by itself. So I add 41.5 to both sides. And I finally get my prediction equation is y equals 2.89x plus 27.05. So now that equation right there I can use to pick any year after 1995 and figure out the percent of households with internet access. So part C says to find the number of households with internet access in the year 2020. Okay? So if that's the case, you've got to think, how many years after 95 is 2020? So my x value is going to be 25 years. So I go to my prediction equation and say y equals 2.89 times 25 years plus 27.07. Okay? 
go to my calculator, put it all in just like it shows, and I find that y equals 99.3%. Okay? So by the year 2020, there's going to be about 99.3% of households that have internet access. Now, how accurate does your prediction appear to be? Well, if you're looking at the line, okay, if I'm looking at the line, it looks like it's pretty accurate. It goes through two points. You have about half above and half below. And the only one that looks kind of not close to the line is that first one, which was um, 218. But for the most part, it looks like it's a pretty good prediction. My only thing I would hesitate is to think about years down the road. So, for example, okay, let's say the year 2045. Okay, well, how many years after 95 is 45? That's going to be x is going to be 50. So if I put 50 into my prediction equation, y equals 2.89 times 50 plus 27.05, I go to my calculator, and it says that I'm going to have 171.55% of the household have internet access. Now, does it make sense that over 100%, almost 200% of households in the U.S. have internet access? It does not. So this is a really good, accurate um, equation up until probably close to the year 2025 or so, maybe even 2020. And then after that, it's not a very good graph anymore. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're looking and you're finding um, a number that doesn't make sense, be mindful of that. Here's a guided practice problem. You can do the same. Plot it out. Okay? Describe this correlation, positive or negative. Write a prediction equation. Predict the selling price of a new home in year 8. And then how accurate does your prediction appear to be? That's an opinion question. Okay. Now the next thing we have is a regression line. And a regression line is a line that's used to um, figure out if something is a positive correlation, negative correlation, or none. Now, you'll probably work with regression lines a lot more in problem stats or in a statistics class or something like that down the road. But for right now, we're just kind of getting our feet wet with it and just seeing what it all means and what it means for our graphs. So the first one, okay, coalition coefficient is going to be either between negative 1 and positive 1. And this is what they mean. The closer it is to negative 1, the more negative correlation it's going to have. If it's at 0, there's no correlation. Or when R is getting really close to 1, that means it has a positive correlation. Okay, so you see the difference? Negative 1 is negative correlation, positive 1 is positive correlation, and 0 is no correlation. Somewhere in there. Now we're going to look at an example, and I'm going to teach you on your calculator how you can create scatter plots. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this data set right here in your notes. Okay? It's talking about life expectancy for people born in different years. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our graphing calculator, so make sure you have them. And we're going to create a dot plot or a scatter plot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the stat button. It's right underneath the leaf. And the first option it is is to edit. So I hit enter. And now I have three tables. And we're going to use the first two. L1 is going to be the years of birth. So I hit 1980, enter. 1983, enter. 1990, enter. 1995, enter. 2000, enter. And 2006, enter. So now I have those six, excuse me, five years of birth. Then we go over, hit over, L2 is going to be their life expectancy. So 73.7, enter, 74.6, enter, 75.4, enter, 75.8, enter, 76.8, enter, and 77.7, enter. Okay, so you should have the same number in the L1 col column as you do in the L2 column. Okay. Now, before we graph it, we have to make sure that our window is set correctly, like it is over on the right. So I click on the window button. It's right next to y equals. And our 
X minimum is going to be 1975. Our X maximum is 2010. And my X resolution is going to be 5. Our Y minimum is going to be 70. Y maximum is going to be 90. Go up by 2s. And the X resolution is 1. Feel free to stop and replay this part of the video if you're confused. Okay? Or if you need a break for a second. Now that I have that all set up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot this data. So I hit second and then stat plot, which is the y equals button. I take the first option, option one, make sure I click enter so that it's on, and I hit the graph button. And you'll see all of my points. It should look just like this picture right here. Okay? If it has error or anything like that, Restart over and rewatch this, and you'll get it. Now, I need to get my line of regression. Okay? So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to hit the stat button. It's right underneath delete. I go over to calculations, and I click on num option four, which is my line of regression in slope-intercept form. Okay? Then I have to hit enter, and it's going to give me something similar to this screen right here. Okay. So it tells us then that A, my slope, is going to be 0.14, blah, 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 blah. And my y-intercept is going to be negative 211.43. Okay. So that's where we can stop right there.